Hello my awesome audience and welcome back to my channel. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to be walking you step by step on how to launch an EC2 instance, install Jenkins on that and as well configure your Jenkins server. So Jenkins is actually an automation server that can help you to implement your CI CD. Now, what is Jenkins? Jenkins is actually an open source automation server and a continuous integration tool that helps to automate various aspects of software development, testing and deployment processes. With Jenkins, developers and DevOps um, engineers can actually create pipelines that will help to define the entire software delivery processes, you know, from source code integration to final deployment to the target environment. By automating those processes in your software delivery, Jenkins will help you to improve efficiency, to reduce manual errors and promote collaboration among team members. With its extensive plugin ecosystem, Jenkins can be customized to work with different tools and technologies. You know, in Jenkins, you have different plugins. You have options to integrate it with other um, external systems or technologies, and is actually known for its versatility and widely adopted solution in the industry. Jenkins is actually a widely adopted CI tool. Okay, so with Jenkins, you can actually automate the build and testing of your software whenever changes are pushed to a version control repository such as Git. Now, continuous integration is actually the practice of frequently and automatically combining code changes from multiple team members to ensure that everything works smoothly that you have you actually have a reliable process in your environment okay so with Jenkins you can perform a wide range of CI tasks you know such as compiling code running unit tests and generating build artifacts now when we talk about continuous uh, delivery which is CD um, I want to let you know that originally you know Jenkins was build to focus on continuous integration okay but you can actually extend the uh the support to cd practices so with jenkins you can actually achieve continuous delivery as well so jenkins can be a part of broader ci cd pipeline where it automates the deployment of software to various environments such as staging or and staging and production okay so continuous delivery is actually the practice of automatically preparing and delivering software updates in order to make them ready for users now let's get started and let's focus on why we are here okay so i'm gonna take you straight to aws and let's launch our ec2 instance install and configure our jenkins server please subscribe to my channel if you are yet to do so like also comment Ask question if you have any and as well hit on that notification bell so you don't get to miss out on my subsequent video. Coming to my AWS management console, I'm going to click on EC2. From the EC2 dashboard, I'm going to click on launch instance. And in this page, so this will be my Jenkins server. So over here, I'll be making use of Amazon Linux. 2023 and that is fine so scrolling down the instance type i'll be making use of is um t2 medium you can use t2 small but please don't use uh t2 micro because it can actually freeze up your server you will not really have a good experience using t2 micro okay so i'll encourage you to use so it depends on um you know the workload you want to run right so if is your production workload you want to set up your ci cd pipeline for production you basically need to go for a higher instance type right but i'm gonna keep this at um t2 medium um going down for the keeper section i'm gonna select the keeper that i have here already but if you don't have a keeper you can actually click on create a keeper give it whatever name you want and um, depending on the terminal you're using you can select either this or this say you're using a mac or windows terminal you can go with dot pem but if you're using sh clients such as putty you can click on uh, this dot ppk right and then you create your keeper download it to your computer and 
that will be all. So let me cancel this and let me go with the keeper I have. Over here, I'll click on edit network settings and um, we'll be making use of default VPC and everything will just be default. Okay. If you have a custom VPC, feel free to select it over here. So we ride on over here, create a security group. Yes, we need to create a security group. So I'm going to be typing Jenkins server or SG. Okay, and I'll copy that and use that as my description as well. So scrolling down, um, so we'll be adding inbound rules. Okay, so by default, SSH rule is here already. And if this is production, you basically need to limit it to your IP or a custom IP. Okay, oh, so it won't be vulnerable. And then I'll add another security group rule. Over here, I'll be adding um, HTTP. Okay, and I want to select the source as anywhere. I also want to add another security group rule. And right now, I want to give it 8080 as the port range, which is actually the port for for Jenkins. Okay, and um, for the source, I want to choose from anywhere, and that is fine. Please, um, you really need to be security conscious if this is production. All right, you really need to know what should have access to your server or should have access to your pipeline and yeah so for instance if you're integrating jenkins with other servers you know like um sonar cube nexus systems you definitely need to also add you here and do the right configuration but want to keep this thing uh want to keep it simple right so yeah this should serve us so if i'm scrolling down we are basically done so i'll click on launch instance Okay, so if I scroll down, view all instances. Okay, so let's give this a second and maybe like a minute. Okay, so this, the, the Jenkins server is now running. So let me copy the public IP address and let's connect remotely to this server. Okay, so this is my git bash terminal. Um, so let's run the command to connect to our Jenkins server. So this is the public IP address I just copied and I'll press enter. Okay. And then I'll type here. All right. So just to let you know, if you don't have your keeper in the part that your, your terminal opens to, you won't be able to connect all right so if you just created your keeper when you were launching your instance ensure that wherever it got downloaded to that you copy it and paste it in the path that your terminal opens to so once you run pwd in your terminal you should see your path all right ensure you paste your keeper there so you don't have connection issue all right so um Right now, I'm going to run um, sudo yum update in order to update the package manager of this server. Okay, nothing to do complete. All right, I'll clear this. Now we can actually get started in the installation process. So coming over here, um, actually, I'm going to be dropping this link in the description below so that you can follow it yourself. So um, downloading and installing Jenkins over here. We just updated it. And so coming to number two, I'm just going to be uh, following this link, right? So I'll copy this one, then going to run this, press enter. Wait. So basically this command helps to add Jenkins repo. Okay. So we just added the Jenkins repo. So coming to this command, this command can help us to import a key file from Jenkins CI in order to enable installation from the package. So I'll copy this. Then I'm going to paste that, press enter. Okay. Now let's upgrade it. So I'll 
Okay, Jenkins table, dependencies resolve, nothing to do complete. Right, now let's install Java. You know, Jenkins is actually a Java based, so um, if you're using Amazon Linux, this is the one to, you should go with. But we are using Amazon Linux 2023, so let's run this. Okay, so let's give it a moment to complete. While this is running, let's see the next um, step. So right now, we'll go ahead to install Jenkins, sudo yum install Jenkins-y. Okay, um, so let's give this a moment to complete. All right, completed. And we can actually check that out by typing java version and you can see open jdk 11.0.20.1 open jdk runtime open jdk 64 b server okay that looks awesome let me clear this so let's install jenkins Installation complete. Let's check. Okay, Jenkins 2.414.1. Okay, and now we should enable Jenkins service. Okay, to start at system boot. So I'm gonna copy this, then paste that. Awesome. Um, has created a sim link at uh, this part okay all right let me clear my terminal and now we have to start jenkins so sudo systemctl start jenkins okay so i had have to separate this yeah right so let's check the status of our jenkins so um system still status jenkins press enter and you can see it is active ensure your jenkins is active if you see these lines um end of line just press q on your keyboard letter q and you'll be fine Okay, so let's see the next um, process. We're actually done with installation. So let's go to configuration. So right now, the next step is to open up Jenkins from our browser and then configure the password, set up our, you know, the admin and all that. So I need to copy the public IP address of my Jenkins browser and Jenkins opens on this port, okay? Post 8080. So just press enter. So your public IP address colon 8080. And this should um, give us a configuration page. Getting started, unlock Jenkins. To ensure Jenkins is securely set up by administrator, password has been written to the log. Um, so in order to get administrator password, we have to copy this. So I'll just so just copy this stuff and in my terminal, I'm going to run sudo cat and then I'll paste this part. Okay. And this is the password. So I'll copy the password. Go back here and paste it. Click on continue. All right. Customize Jenkins. So we, in Jenkins, we actually need plugins to keep all these things working together. So plugins in Jenkins can actually help you to extend Jenkins with additional features in order to support many different needs. So in Jenkins, you can, you know, integrate, you, you can actually integrate Jenkins with other, you know, systems, other technologies in order to extend the functionality or the features that Jenkins offers to you. So let's go ahead to install suggested plugin. Just click on it. 
Okay, so getting started and it's gonna be installing a lot of plugins for us, so just give it a moment. Right, so the installation of those plugins uh, is complete. So right now, let's create the admin um, user. In order to set up your admin user, you have to give your name. So I will just use admin here and then I will type my password. And then I can give my full name. I just want to stick with admin. So here you can give your email address, right? Click on save and continue. All right, Jenkins URL. So this is actually the URL of your Jenkins and you can copy it out and save it somewhere, but it is basically the public IP address and the and the port, okay? And in case you have a domain name, you can actually use your domain name as well for this, but that is beyond the scope of this. So go ahead with this one. I'll just click on save and finish. Jenkins is ready. So the setup is complete and we can start using Jenkins. So I'll click on start using Jenkins. And great. So this is Jenkins dashboard and it says welcome to Jenkins. All right. So this is the Jenkins dashboard and you can now actually go ahead to do other configurations depending on the workload, depending on the, you know, the pipeline you want to set up, depending on whether you want to use this as just a continuous integration server or both continuous integration and continuous delivery server. Go ahead to install plugins that you actually need to carry out your workload and all that. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much. Kindly give me a thumbs up if you like this video, comment and also subscribe. Click on notification bell so you get to see notifications each time I publish a new video. Thank you so much. I'm going to see you in my next video. Bye.